<clears throat> All right. Today's passage is Luke chapter 22, verses 52 to 62. Now, this is the passage where Peter denies knowing Jesus after Jesus has been arrested. Now, this passage is, is set up for us earlier in Luke 22. We, we, we've already read those. This is where Jesus actually tells Peter, this is what you're going to do. He says, you will, you will deny me three times before the night time. And that is exactly what happens. Now, maybe a bit of a spoiler alert, but this isn't the end for Peter. Uh, Jesus reinstates him. You read that specifically in, in John's Gospel. But also it, it's, it's hinted at in uh, the setup in Luke 22 where Jesus is praying for Peter and then he says, when you return, strengthen your brothers. So even when he was prophesying that he was going to deny him, he also prophesied that he would return. So you see, Jesus chose Peter to be the leader of the church, the rock, that he would build his church on, knowing full well what he was going to do, knowing that he was going to deny three times. And not only did he prophesy that he would deny him, he prophesied that he would come back. Jesus knew exactly what Peter was going to do, but still chose him. Now, you see, God knows the future. God knows what I'm going to do tomorrow. He knows what you're going to do tomorrow. Now, that can bring in interesting, muddy theological waters around God's sovereignty and free will. I believe the Bible does reconcile those two things. I, I have free will, I make my choices, but God is sovereign and knows the future. And also, what's important is that God chooses us. You see, in the West, we're a little bit more egocentric. It's all about me. And so we say things like, I've chosen to follow God. I've decided to live for God. And that's true. We do make those choices and decisions. But the Bible teaches a more primary, fundamental truth that God chooses us. We can read that in Ephesians 1.11, uh, 1 Peter 1.2. Uh, and Jesus says in John 6.44, No one can come to me unless the Father draws him. You see, God always makes the first move. And so when we decide to follow God, what we're doing is we're responding to God making the first move towards us. God is the first mover. God chooses us. And when God chooses us, he chooses us knowing our futures. See, I became a Christian 35 years ago. And when God chose me back then, he knew everything I was going to do over the next 35 years and what I will do for the rest of my life. He knows all of that. He, he knew the, the mistakes I was going to make. And there's been one or two. In fact, there's been loads, millions. You know, uh, all of us can think of times when we've blown it, we've made mistakes, we've done things wrong. God knew all of that when he chose you. So nothing you do surprises him. Nothing you do can make him change his mind about you because he knew it anyway when he chose you. And I find that very reassuring. Now, this isn't to underestimate the importance of sin. Sin is an important issue, and, and Peter certainly didn't. You know, when the cock crowed and he realised what he'd done, the passage here tells he went away and wept bitterly. And maybe that's something... We need to think about in our own lives and our own response to our sin. But let's also not underestimate the power of God's grace. You see, the Bible tells us that where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. In other words, if you've got this much sin in your life, God will give you that much grace. If you've got that much sin, he'll give you that much grace. And guess what? If you've got that much sin, he'll give you that much grace. He's always got enough grace to cover our sins. And another thing I find interesting is that when Jesus was prophesying what Peter was going to do here in this passage, and he prayed for him, and he didn't pray that when Satan wants to test you, 
Peter, I'm going to pray that God will fill you with courage and boldness to declare my name. He said, I pray that your faith may not fail. And that's a bit strange. But I don't think it is because if you think about it, how are we saved? By grace, through faith. See, I'm not saved by what I do for Jesus or what I say I will do for Jesus. And let's face it, Peter was always ready to say what he was going to do. No, Jesus, I'll die for you, he said. He said, nah. nah. Before the night's out, you will deny me three times. And that's what we see happen. So he prayed that his faith would not fail. Because he knows, Jesus knows, that I'm not saved by what I do for Jesus. I'm saved by faith in what Jesus has done for me. And so I think in this passage we see him Peter making a monumental mistake. But Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do and he chose him anyway. And when God chooses us, he knows everything that we will do for the rest of our lives. Nothing surprises him. Nothing will make him change his mind about us. God knew everything we would do in the whole of our lives, even the things that you may still cringe about, and he chose you anyway, and he still chooses you. And I find that very reassuring.